let's go back to uh, Proverbs. Sorry, I'm jumping for a reason. Okay? Now, what shall I advise you, son of my vows and dedication to God? Okay? Give not your strength to lose women, nor your ways to those who and that which ruins and destroys kings. In other words, there is a loose woman and there are ways, methods, okay, to those who and that which ruins and destroys kings. Now let us look at the next sentences carefully and we deal with the fatherless son because that's what she's dealing with. It is not for kings, all them well, it is not for kings to drink wine or for rulers to desire strong drink. Now let's pause. The question here is not whether it's a sin or not. The question is whether you are a king or not. Beggars, it's fine. It's fine. Let me explain. Ken just said that for most men in crisis, what do they do? They drink, right? What are they just trading? Their kingship, their rulership. Okay, let's, let's prove it. Lest they drink and forget what? And what it decrees, and pervert the just justice and due and justice due any of the afflicted. Give strong drink as medicine to him who is ready to pass away, and wine to him in bitter distress of heart. So let's go back pole pole and understand. He is being advised and he's being told that there are two things that destroy men. Lose women and strong drink. Okay, now let's pause. What is the biggest crisis in Kenya? Men do what? Drink. Are we together? Second problem? Okay. It took me a very long time to figure out what he was talking about. All right? When a man is in trouble, what are the two things he looks for? A woman and a drink. Men go to the bar to look for what? Okay. So what is really going on? What is going on is this. I do not have enough strength to stand. I am running away. That's what it means. Oh, so that's what we can do means, means to us. We like we live like we are dying Monday, Thursday, Friday. Then we live on why? Because it's the only time you run away from what? Your labor. <laughs> so that's what we do. We go to the bar to escape. Correct? We go to prostitutes to be placated. By the way, can I tell you something? This will deliver you. Much of the adultery and fornication is not about lust. It is an inability to cope with pain. It took me a long time to figure that out. It is an escape. There are things in your life you've not dealt with. So you're perverting the course of justice. You're escaping. Are we together? Hey, Proverbs 31 men. Tuko, I think he topic. Leo si party claps after class. Okay? The women will clap. <laughs> so, what is the man doing here? This is an escapist. This is a man who's refused to face his life. Okay? Oh, see, what, what, what are bars for? What do we do? What do we used to do in bars, those who went? See, we were running away. Hey, Joe, man, Joe, we, you and I used to go to the bar. Kitambo. Okay? What were we doing? Escape. 
So what is he what is this addressing? That a proper king is not an escapist. If there is a problem with men, let's be honest, how many times do we want to run away from hard situations? It is the most natural thing. Let me tell you, a man will desert you so quick, you'll be shocked. Let just things be hard for one second. Tangu ni kuja hii master class imekuwa ngumu. Are we together? Am I making sense, guys? So this man cannot escape. Let's continue. Let him drink and forget his poverty. So drinking is good for? <laughs> so the next time someone asks you whether it is okay to drink, refer them to the qualifications. Sir, and seriously remember his want and misery, no? Do you understand? So the question is, should I drink or not? There, there is, please qualify. <laughs> Open your mouth for the dumb, those unable to speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are left desolate and defenseless. Okay? Now, question, how many men are like that? See Proverbs 31, man. Putting pressure on chicks to do all these things. Eh. You, when there is injustice, what do you do? When you are in a matatu and it's overloading, what do you do? And you want to marry a daughter of the king. <laughs> Guys, so you are describing a man. This is why you need a father. Because you need bravery to be taught to you. You understand? So what happens is you open your mouth for those who are unable to speak for themselves. For the rights of all who are left desolate and defenseless. How many defenseless people do you defend? Most men, the only person they know how to defend is them. Listen, in fact, let me tell you. You think someone who defends the defenseless will beat you up? So this guy cannot defend the defenseless around him. He is not bringing any change in his environment. Guys, am I making sense? So you're about to marry this guy. How is his environment? Does his watchman look at him as his defender or just a guy who lives in apartment too? What is your impact? If you, are, if you moved... Makuku, if you moved, will your neighbors say, oh, ule msali kwanga mdaka mehama, or will they say a defender of justice has left? Eh? How, listen, how much injustice thrives in your environment? Proverbs 31, man. Men of valor. You know all those things you like being called. Eh, how many qualify? Okay, let's continue. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and administer justice for the poor and the needy. Okay? You want to get married. Let me tell you one thing about being married. Okay? You will have poor and needy individuals called children. You must learn to give all the time. Sindio? So if you want to check this guy's marriage material, check if he can take care of the needy. Check. Oh, are we okay? Proverbs 31, men. <laughs> How many, listen, let me, let, me, let me put it like this. How many needy people depend on you? Eh? Okay, let's check. Let's check for fruit. How many needy people depend on you, male and female? How many? Even master class can't depend on you. Can I just teach the truth? Hey. Listen, so we've just qualified the Proverbs 31 man. Okay? What is he? He has a father. He is a son. He is wife to Christ. 
he submitted to Christ. He is a defender of the unjust. He is not an escapist. I'm not going to talk about kingship because that's a long story. Do I have time? But I want you to understand this. This is the premise upon which you can demand a wife. Can I prove to you why? When God was making a woman to be wife to Adam, he was meeting a need. What was that need? Help. It was not companionship. It was? Now, it means that the only reason you need a wife is if you are doing something. And that doing something is not having a job. Because we've proven even children can have jobs. Okay? What that need is, what you need to be helped for, is you are a defender of the needy. You don't escape when you see problems. Are we together? You are a son. Are we together? When you are in that proper functionality, you need help. Not want help. Because you know you can want help, step one. But help is needed where there is more than enough work. Can we agree? So help is not needed because your bed is cold. Help is not needed because time is running. Help is needed because you are functional. What is the function I'm talking about? Function is not roles in the house. There's no husband and wife roles. Because if the man likes to cook, what happens? Or if your wife gets promoted, what happens? You understand? The only thing that there can be is a man and a woman who is mature. Okay? Now, the mature man knows his kingship but understands submission is a son and is functional in his environment that wherever he is there is change do you understand in other words what you see women keep checking do you have a job wrong question because any fool can get a job right trump is president that's proof enough Okay? Therefore, what you need to check for is not the tree. You check for the fruit. What is the fruit? What is changing in the lives of people around you before I get involved with you? Because if you do not have the capacity to change environments and you give me your seed... I will put it in a womb and I will give it back to you. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. You see, what women must understand is if the man has no capacity to produce alone, what will he produce with you? <laughs> Are we together? Do you understand? Listen. If this man is not changing the earth, why are we allowing him to have children? Save the earth. We don't need more of them. No, let's be honest. If we were doing science, okay, and we were to choose whose genes go to the next generation, who are we choosing? Do you qualify? The next generation does not need good looks and sagging pants. Listen. What God requires is godly children, correct? That means the seed must be what? Godly. So if this person has no capacity to change the earth, why are you torturing your children? You know, walk into a job, nothing ever changes. Tell them to clean the floor, it's as dirty as ever. You know, men, I find men very interesting. Mark, give me a meeting. Okay, I'll meet you tomorrow at 10. 
I've just checked my schedule. I'm busy. Oh, busier than me. You know, we are funny. This guy doesn't even have the ability to maintain a clock. Oh, can I teach the truth? Then you want his genes to continue. This guy, you give him a plot of land. You come back a year later, he didn't harvest even one year of corn and you want to have his children. Hey. <laughs> Guys, are you okay? Me not non and tough kuzu a master class. <laughs> See, the point, listen, listen. If I tell you, help me, we've said this before, you'll ask me with what? Sindio. So let me put it to you like this. Woman, when you marry a man, you will help him with whatever he's doing. So let me ask you a question. He's not doing anything. What will you help? Oh, see, that's what you end up doing. You pay the bills. You take care of him. Oh, God. You take care of the children. You wash the dishes. <laughs> Proverbs 31, man. This is the one who qualifies for the Proverbs 31 woman. What's the difference again? This man is connected to his emotions. He has a heart. And he can sit with you and deal with an issue without escaping. Oh, see, so you know them. Yeah, you can come on, see, we are men. There are men who can't deal with issues. They live and hide behind the pastor. Pasia Lisema. Because he can't deal with an issue. Where do we learn to deal with issues? When we are fathered. Because that person can call you and say, Joe, you're not serious. Ever since I last saw you, you've missed the mark. Because the role of a father is to get you into uncomfortable situations. Can I tell you the difference between a father and a mother? My wife, when my son is scared of lizards, she keeps lizards away. When my son is scared of lizards, I bring lizards. It's a role of a father. It's how, that's the balance, by the way. You get. Daddy, I don't want to jump. Oh, let's jump together. That's the job of a father, right? In other words, the, a real man is a man who has another man in his life constantly making him uncomfortable. Constantly. That when you think you've done well, he comes and tells you, hey, by the way, you can do better here, but good work. That's the role of a father, right? It's a good father. A good father is not the one who tells you, I had that. God is going to bless you. He's going to bless you. No, 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 no. That's a good joker. No, no. A good father. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, because what? Your rod, they comfort me. Okay, now let me tell you something. A staff is carved like this. Okay? All right? It's used for grabbing the sheep by the neck and pulling them back. Okay, so that's comforting. What is a rod for? Okay. Do you find discipline comforting? So you see how much of a bastard you are, eh? See, it says a fool despises discipline. Oh, it's very easy. How many of us complain and grumble to God when things are hard? Let's understand. Proverbs 31, man. Again, let me finish with this. Go back to verse 1. What my son, son of my womb, what shall I die? advise you, son of my vows, an education to God? What is that? Question. 
The people who are supposed to father you, how would they describe you? Son of my problems and stress and disobedience? How do, listen, question, question. Your preacher, okay? How does he describe you? Son who avoids me? Son who only calls me when they're in trouble? <laughs> oh, guys, are we okay? Do you understand? What, listen, if you want to know the quality of son you are, ask those who are supposed to father you. Are we together? There are two sons, Jesus said. Their father told them, go. One son said, I will not go. And the other one said, I will. As time went by, the one who said he will go did not go. And the one who said he won't go, he went. Who did the father find correct? The one who went, correct? Okay. So this is what happens in churches. Have you received the word? Yes, correct? You receive it with excitement. How many do? How many do? Those who do are the only members of that church you have. <laughs> uh, let me put it to you like this. I struggled. Let me finish there. I'm on time for one. Say a clap for me. <laughs> Let me finish with this. I had an argument with God. That the question, who is a member of master class? Who, who would I tell? Uh, who's new? Who's new? I think the lady, at, the three ladies at the back are new. Yeah? If you, they asked me, they need a brother and a sister to walk with. Who would I refer them to? Who would I say, this one will walk with you? Who are the sons that we have in master class? Who, who are those? So I began to search the Bible. And I found something very interesting. David, the Bible goes to great lengths. He's the only king they do this for. To describe who he put in charge of everything. Uh, it says who he was in charge of the sheep, who was in charge of the treasury, who was in charge of grapes. And I'm like, who cares? But what was interesting is with each story, it said this one killed 20 Egyptians who are giants. This one. And I'm like, okay, why would God be interested in only giant slayers taking care of grapes? The grapes are not going to grow feet and bite you back. Correct? The pests on grapes are not giants. So what is going on? And then I saw something interesting. When Jesus healed someone, okay, and they said, can I follow you? Do you know what Jesus said? No. Go back. Okay? Then, if you count the total number of miracles done on the disciples, you'll find there are only three. First, when they caught fish. Twice. Okay? So I count that one miracle. Second, when Peter found a coin in the mouth of the fish. Correct? And third, this is by association, when Peter's mother was healed. Three. Cindy? Now. So they have no direct miracles. Because in the first two miracles, they fished. Jesus spoke. You get the difference? They fished, Jesus spoke. So let me give you a revelation. A true disciple is not the one who calls you to do a miracle. Is the one who comes to seek for the grace to do the miracle themselves. That's a true son. <laughs> and did you hear what I just said? If you're going to seek something, don't seek a miracle. 
seek to be a miracle worker. Hey. Do you guys are you understanding me? You see the guys who left Jesus in John were all miracle seekers all of them. The guys who stayed with Jesus were all miracle workers all of them. So, who's a member of this family? It is the one who hears and does. Because Jesus defined it. He said, my brothers and sisters are them who do the will of God. So can you differentiate yourself? Are you a son? You see, the beauty about a son is he does what the father does. A son does not hear what the father says merely. He does. Are you a doer? Okay? 